Okay guys, uh, we're going to continue on here. We're in lesson three now of unit three. We've been dealing with our trig, trig functions, our periodic functions, and uh, last section we really got heavy into sine, cosine, and tangent, and uh, we finished up, if you remember, we finished up with the unit circle, uh, how to do that. So I was, want to remind you that you do have to memorize that uh, so you need to make sure you are trying to recreate the unit circle as much as possible just so it becomes a habit for you uh, but if you remember the unit circle has a, a radius of one always and uh, so we were able to do some things pretty easily but now we want to look past that we want to be able to do any trig function uh, even if it doesn't have a radius of one uh, and we want to be able to find exact values where that terminal side goes beyond something that has a radius of one, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna utilize the Pythagorean theorem a lot today. Uh, the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Using that a great bill, but it'll be in the form x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And so we wanna we wanna dive right into some examples today. I just wanna remind you um, that we we figured out in the last section that cosine is the x value and uh, sine was the y value but that was when the radius was equal to one now the radius is going to be equal to something different so we're going to have to go back to where sine is actually equal to y over the radius and cosine is actually equal to x over the radius okay so let's take a look here at example one and what we're doing is we're finding the exact values of sine and cosine for the functions of theta and we're going to use radicals if we have to but uh, you see they give us a point on the terminal side of negative 5, 3. And so if this, you know, if this radius was uh, 1, we could just say cosine is negative 5, sine is 3. But because the radius is not 1, we have to go about fi figuring out what that is. And so what we do first is we utilize x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And that's going to help us find the radius. And so looking at that point, that's negative 5 squared plus 3 squared equals r squared well that's 25 plus 9 is equal to r squared 34 equals r squared which means the square root of 34 is our radius so our radius is the square root of 34 which is this distance right here now what we can do is from there because our radius is the square root of 34 we can then figure out what uh what our sine and our cosine is so if our point is negative five three that means the height here is three and the horizontal axis is a negative five and so what we'll do is we'll figure out the sine of theta and that's equal to remember the y value which is three over the square root of thirty four now we need to rationalize those denominators so we're going to multiply both sides by root thirty four top and bottom and that's going to give us 3 root 34 over just 34. We're going to repeat that process with cosine, but we're going to use the x value, which is negative 5 over root 34, because that's our radius. Again, rationalize that denominator for both. And what we end up with is negative 5 root 34 over 34. <clears throat> and that's that's how we find the sine and the cosine there uh, but again first thing we did was we found what the radius was because the radius is no longer just one and so now <clears throat> we're gonna go and we're gonna find one trig ratio to find the other ones and so they tell you that it's an acute angle theta is that sine is 5 over 6 so remember sine is 5 over 6 that means that's y over r okay and so that means the y value is 5, the radius is 6. We want to find the cosine and the tangent values of theta. And so we're still going to use this formula here. But instead of finding r, we're going to find actually x. So it becomes x squared plus 5 squared equals 6 squared. Well, x squared plus 25 is 36 x squared equals 11 when you subtract the 25 over so x is actually equal to the square root of 11 so if we draw this picture here sine is 5 over 6 that means that you know we got a terminal side here 
that means the vertical distance was 5, the radius was 6, and we found this horizontal distance to be the square root of 11. So the cosine of theta, which is x over r, that's going to be the square root of 11 over 6. And remember the tangent of theta was y over x, so that turns out to be the y value is 5, the x value was the square root of 11. We got to get rid of that radical in the denominator. So it's 5 root 11 over 11 as our tangent. <clears throat> so that's using one of the trig ratios that we know to find the other one. All right, if you look at example 3 here, uh, it says theta terminates in quadrant 3, which is the bottom left, and so when you see quadrant 3, you need to know that the x value is negative and the y value is negative. Both values are negative there, and they tell us that tangent of theta is 4 over 7. Now remember, tangent, tangent is y over x, okay, but because tangent is positive, that means that it's really this, negative y over negative x. <clears throat> and so what you have is we have something that's terminating in quadrant 3 here. And because it's y over x, that means this is negative 4. This is actually negative 7. So what we need to do first is we need to figure out what that radius is. So using that Pythagorean theorem, negative 7 squared plus negative 4 squared and that's going to be equal to r squared well that's 49 plus 16 equals r squared that's going to be 65 equals r squared take the square root of that that ends up being the square root of 65 is our radius which equals r <clears throat> and they wanted us to find exact values meaning no decimals for sine and cosine. So remember sine of theta is the y value over r. So that's negative 4 over the square root of 65. And hopefully you're starting to see the pattern of, well, when I rationalize that denominator, it becomes negative 4 root 65 over 65. And then cosine of theta is going to be the x value, which is negative 7 over the radius square root of 65. And again, it follows that same pattern, negative 7 root 65 over 65. So there's your cosine, or sine and cosine. But again, the key to that problem, guys, is it tells us we're in quadrant 3. So when we see we're in quadrant 3, we need to know that x and y are both negative, um, and that way we know the appropriate sign to put on those each of those functions here. All right, so last section we used some some special right triangles, the 30 60 90 triangle and we used the 45 45 90 triangle to kind of figure out what our x and y coordinates were going to be across that unit circle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to revisit those. If you remember with the 30 60 90 triangle, um, you had your short leg which we called x and then to find the hypotenuse, we multiplied the short leg times 2. And then to find the long leg, we multiplied the short leg times root 3. And then with the 30, uh, excuse me, the 45, 45, 90 triangle, what we did was both legs were the same because it's an isosceles triangle. And then to find the hypotenuse, we just multiplied the short leg times the square root of 2. And that gave us the hypotenuse. Um, and so then... Just want to remind you, you're going to see 30, 45, 60 a lot in our course. And so just be reminded or, you know, cognizant of the fact 30 degrees in radians is pi over 6. 45 degrees in radians is pi over 4. 60 degrees in radians is pi over 3. And so we're going to complete this table here. This kind of recaps uh, what we did last time with the unit circle. We talked about the x and the y coordinates. And so we got some special angle here from the unit circle. Uh, remember we said 
you know, pi over 6 is that first one we see on the unit circle, and the sine value of that was 1 half. Um, the cosine of that was root 3 over 2, which made the tangent, we did this last time, was root 3 over 3. Going to the 45, one step up on the unit circle. Remember the sine was root 2 over 2. The cosine was root 2 over 2, which means the tangent, y over x, is simply just 1. Because when you divide root 2 over 2 by root 2 over 2, you end up with just 1. And then everything flips here. So the sine of 60 was root 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 was 1 half. And the tangent was simply root 3 when you divide uh, when you divide sine divided by cosine. <clears throat> and so they ask a few questions here. That's, we talk about complementary angles. Remember, complementary means they add to 90, so 60 and 30. If you look, the sine of 30 is actually the same thing as the cosine of 60, and those are both 1 half. And if you look at the sine of 45, was equal to the cosine of 45 which is root 2 over 2 and so this is something you've learned before but the sine of theta whatever theta is and cosine of 90 minus theta because we're talking about complementary angles are equal these are equal so the sine of an acute angle it has to be acute so the sine of an acute angle is equal to the cosine of that angle's complement and that's something you should have learned a while back but just want to refresh you on it Okay, guys, and so that's uh, that's all we're going to have here for the first part of three point, uh, section 3. Uh, I'll have another video for section B, but for now, I just want you to start working on those practice set problems uh, and getting more familiar with these trig functions, and uh, especially make sure you're paying attention to that unit circle.